Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, live from Harlem in New York City, it's me, it's Alex, and this is The Ramble. There she is, down in Florida, lovely and attractive Lori Thompson. Hasn't aged a day since I worked with oh, her. Your check is in the mail. Oh. You know what I suddenly realized, uh, and we, we're going to get back to what we were talking last time because we want to talk about chiropractors. So let's remember that. But yeah. I, okay. what I, what I did uh, during the uh, Olympics, uh, I always, my mind always flew back to the Olympics we went to, and we went to quite a few of them. We, we did. We yeah. went to I think Several. four in a row, if you if winter and we summer. Uh, yeah. Maybe, no, maybe five. Wait a minute. Five? No, four. Four. Three. Yeah, there was uh, Alberville, there was Barcelona, there was, uh, uh, the, what do you call it? Uh, 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 what was it? The, the, up in Lillehammer, Norway. Lillehammer, Lillehammer. And then there and was, then, and I went and, to Nagano, but I think that you had graduated yeah. from Lot 105. Yeah, at I, I went to Atlanta. Yeah, there. yeah, Atlanta. I remember that one. Yeah. And the. A bomber hadn't been caught yet. Hadn't been or, caught or yet. Gonna... Uh, no, they hadn't been blown up yet. Oh, we, we oh, went there. We I... hung out there, and then we went back home. And I went. Guess what? Just got bombed. You yeah. Know, the place we were Cause... going and getting Slurpees from. You know. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. No Slurpees today. Anyway. Uh, so I'm. I, and all of a sudden, I realized I don't have. I I have a lot. Almost every of the videos. You know, I used to make videos of everything. I love those videos. I, I have the one when we did uh, Alberville, when we were in the yeah. Alps and in that. Uh, uh, what do you call it? What do they call those houses? Chalet. 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 And uh, I have that, but I don't have the video I made of Barcelona and Lillehammer. And I think well, it, I, th I think it's in my it's in my uh, storage, but I just you never. Might look, yeah. And Ibiza was in there too, so it might be under Ibiza because no, we did a no, lot. No, no, but it ends with Ibiza. Barcelona ends with Ibiza. It ends with us in bed together. Oh, remember? my my. No, yeah. you you remember we took out a room. We only they only had one room in the hotel. We took it and said you slept in the same bed with me. You know. That's right. But we that was did, no, we did, we, no we did, tequila. We did this whole bit, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> about us not. Oh, gee, we've never, we've never, done, and then we start, you know, the, and it goes out. It goes You're fade, up. Fades to black as you hear the moaning. <laughs> uh, but I don't we know. We did our I, own moaning. I don't it know where that tape person. is, and I think it's probably in storage, and I just never committed it to a digital, to a digital file. Yeah. Is your storage near the house? No, it's in, well, near if you call uh, Petaluma near. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all relative, right? It's you can have relative. Bill Mann keep an eye on it. <laughs> it. It used to be near me. It's not now. You know. I know that's the thing. When you get well, that's like the storage locker and the funeral issue is also about where you live most of your life. Are you going to be buried? where you were born, you're going to be buried next to your parents. You know, when you've lived several places, yeah. it becomes a question. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, um, um, I don't know where they are, but I'm just going to send me all the tapes that I have up there. And uh, Yeah, you know, that's a great idea. You know, yeah. and then I'll just, I can store them here somewhere. I, believe it or not, we have 2,500 square feet, no more room left. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, because and but, the storage lockers almost make it worse because yeah. you have that you know safety valve. Well, I could tell them to send me the videotapes, you know. Yeah, just have uh, that. All the videotapes, and then I can if there's some I don't want to keep, I'll throw them out. But these are all masters, you know. And, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I uh, but I don't have those, but I was remembering them, and uh, uh, you know how really great the Barcelona. Uh, opening ceremonies were, you Dream. know, 
<laughs> and I compared them to the French opening ceremonies, and I don't know if you've watched the French opening ceremonies, but they I were did. terrible, just terrible. Well, well, there's no actual flame involved. Did you know that? The, the, no, they had a cauldron. Yeah. <laughs> they, no, well, you can do that. That's a, that's a flame, you know. That's and fair, And I thought the yeah. fact that it was on a balloon and it was hovering over Paris... I think that mm -hmm. was good. That was interesting. Celine Dion, I was amazed by. I was never a fan of hers. And then I heard her sing the other night, and I went, she, she just nailed it. Just, you know. Yeah. Probably she brought it. Better than yeah. she's ever been. And she's been very ill. Very. With that uh, stiff person disease. Yeah, stiff person disease. Yeah. Right. Yeah, she did totally rise to the occasion. I got stiff person disease, but it was only below the waist, so <laughs> I... It was chronic for several it years. It was chronic for several <laughs> years. <laughs> right. Bad boy, bad yeah, boy. Hey, bad boy, don't do that. I, you know, don't, don't, don't tell the girl I like her. Anyway, uh... Yeah, so uh, so it you know then I, I, I you know I looked thought about the for instance Barcelona went to that Elton John concert which is oh, that was was wonderful so and it's on it's on video good. you know that's available on video yeah and uh, we went to that and you know then we of course seeing uh, having uh, O J Simpson biased drinks that was fun that, that was, was kind of a it yeah. became more interesting after. He killed that pretty white wife of his. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was fun. Yeah, it was all. You know, so I mean, that was a lot of fun. And then uh, the one in uh, Lillehammer, I I had a lot of stuff. I'm sure I made a video out of. Did I give you any of those videos? No, that's what I would love. One of Ibiza. That would be so rocky. Well, well, the Ibiza uh, is on the on the uh, Barcelona. The Barcelona. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, that would just make some great, like, quality. Yeah, but I, quality so I, I'm sure I've got it in storage. I'm sure yeah. I do. Either that or I've got the raw footage in storage. You yeah, know, so and some lovely storage part timer would love to go in and fetch your videotapes and, and put them in the box. Yeah, and I have a uh, what do you call it here? I have uh, I have a, a, a several machines that will play almost any of the of the tapes that I recorded on over the years. So, great, multi-format. Yeah. yeah, so I could I could I could copy it and make it. I but I'm I'm just wondering. All of a sudden, I didn't know where did they go because I I put almost everything up online that I did on video, and uh -huh. uh, we have the one where we were in the Alps. I have that yeah. one, uh, but yeah, otherwise I I can't find the other one so i assume they're in storage yeah what and it's so frustrating when you can't you're like well they could be there they could be here they could be here and when you check the last place and there, there's always yeah. one place you kind of hold an escrow because if it's and that's not where there, they are yeah it's gone. No, well okay. in this case it, the only place they can be is in storage i didn't yeah. throw them out and uh they got to be in storage you know, so. you can call Petaluma High School, and kids can get a class credit for going over <laughs> the videotape. It would work. Well, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna ask him if he can just find the tape. But if he can't find them in my stuff, I'm just gonna tell him send me all my videotapes. He sent me all yeah. my. He sent me all the audio tapes. I have every almost every show we did at Live 105. Really? Now I had a whole lot of them. Um, there was a. The day after we were fired, or after um, I got the news. Actually, it wasn't. They paid out my contract. I have no bone to pick with CBS. It was good. But that after we got the news, the day after, I went with a rolling suitcase. Well, when, wait a minute. When, the, when did you get fired? Uh, uh, it was, I believe, in May of 98. May of and like 98. I said, it, yeah. hand, it was handled so kindly. Dan Mason of CBS, I am such a fan of his because he handled. I got to know him here in New York a little bit because he was a friend of, of a friend of mine. I used to yeah. go over to dinner uh, at his house, and Dan was sometimes there. So, yeah, he's just a wonderful nice gentleman. Guy. Nice guy. Uh, and he's from Kentucky, and I could tell. Um, even though I didn't know anything about him other than he was giving us our walking papers, uh, that he was 
from Kentucky or had grandparents or yeah. from Kentucky. Well, this was when, you, well, this was when you were still lady. there after I left because Johnny Steele was there. Yes. And he was there for was, about three months, and then they just ripped the show off later, the air. And yeah. g- gave it and started porting in Howard Stern. Right. Yeah. Which was their game plan, and I knew that the minute CBS bought us, that we were, you know, I saw the writing on the wall. Because yeah. that's what they were doing, going to major markets. It, well, what they the were doing, what they were doing, they hired uh, Johnny Steele, uh, the rat fuck. Uh, Whoa! Uh, yeah. I well, that. well, no, he he used to. Here's here's how he got his job. How he replaced me. He kept going into Pat, what's his name, the, the general Matt manager, McNally. Pat, Pat McNally's yeah. office, and going. Alex been mean to me today. What? Yeah, I, one day Pat says, why have you been mean to, to to Johnny? And I said, I wasn't mean to him. I just have a lot of things on my mind when I'm doing a show. Yeah. You know, I can't pay attention to him every moment. You know. And he, and he did that constantly. He was uh, He was in there just fighting for my job. And by yelling and screaming at Pat that I wasn't treating him well and then kissing Pat's ass and so... Finally, they let me go, and they put Johnny in there. That's how he got his goddamn job. You know, yeah, that's and, how he's a real that's, weasel, real weasel. That you know. wasn't very kosher. Yeah. yeah, and he was easy to work with, but I thought the show took a downscale. Well, because he wasn't uh, a radio um, person, he didn't know what he was doing. It became it, yeah, it, it just became a little. Uh, you know what happened? There was a there was a big mistake that a lot of radio stations made in trying to compete with me. Okay, because mm-hmm. they would always go out and hire a comedian. They thought yeah. because I had I comics on the show, if they, if, if they hired a yeah. comedian, then they would be like doubling their chances. But the fact yeah. is, comedians don't know how to do radio shows. The pacing and, is completely and, different. And a very simple reason why. And I've, I've talked about this with Larry, and Larry agrees totally. It's the same reason I can't do stand-up. Mm-hmm. I am trained to go into a studio and do a show for four hours if I have to. Yeah, marathon. Okay? Three hours, sometimes if they're kind. Okay? <laughs> but four hours many times. Uh, I can do that. I used to be able to do that standing on my head because that's what I was trained to do. I was trained yeah. how to pace myself and how to use other people and how to play off of other people and how to pace myself out for four hours. A comedian goes, they go to Johnny Steele and they say, Johnny, we're giving you Alex's show. And the first morning he goes on, he does all his material. And the second morning, he doesn't have any. That is, yeah, that is a real um, obstacle. Exactly. For a lot of they do not know how to do radio. Just yes. ridiculous, and so everybody they ever threw against me was a comedian. Never succeeded at that at that job. I remember, you yeah. Know, so and yeah, the one comedian that did it, I thought really well was when he would sub for you was Greg Proust. Greg Proust was, was good, but then He's again, so sub, subbing for me doesn't work either. I mean, if he had to do it every day, I don't think he could do it. Yeah, it's it's okay. hard to maintain. Now get me that, get, get me a good radio person who's been doing the, t- the kind of show that I do or whatever. And nobody does the show I do, but you know, <laughs> but but does an entertainment show, and he can do it. You know, yeah, he might not do it as well. He might not get the ratings. A lot of variables, but still, he's going to do it better than any comedian you're going to bring in to do it. This so is that's true. Why, I mean, that's pacing why, is a yeah. huge part of it. And Johnny Steele, I called Johnny Steele Sherbert, because like when you go, well, when you go to a meal and they, it's like a ten-course meal. Uh, between certain courses, they give you Sherbert to cleanse your palate. Right. All right. And he was Sherbert. He was the Sherbert between me and Howard Stern. In that's other words, everybody analogy. cleansed their palate of me. Then mm-hmm. they brought in Howard Stern. Then Howard didn't look bad like he was replacing me because he was replacing Johnny. Very true. And that's yeah. why they didn't immediately, as soon as they let me go, because they could have done it, start running Howard Stern in San Francisco because the uh, it would be, be kind of nasty, 
You know, I mean, for a while there, you know, um, Mel Carmazan tried to hire me away from Live 105, if you may remember. I, it, I remember I, the rumblings. They wanted me to go to Washington, D.C., uh, and uh, uh, I didn't go. Uh, I, I said, yeah, I'll take the job, you know, because they were offering me just as much money, but they were also offering me syndication. Oh, man, Ben. Yeah. I've often thought that is yeah. the crucial difference between you and Stern. Yeah. He had syndication available to him for the most, so most of I, the time. I, I went in. I gave my notice to Pat. And Pat says, well, you got a contract. I said, yeah, but if you look at the contract, you can get rid of me in five minutes so I can get rid of you in five minutes. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it, it, what has, it, it, there has to be an equity there. Anyway, yeah. I said, I feel sorry about it, but, you know, I'm offered a good job. It's in Washington. Mel Carmazan, he's the guy who made Stern a star, you know, uh, with his organization. And I said, I've, I've just got to go. And so he said, okay. So now... We come closer to the day that um, that I'm supposed to get the contracts from Carmazan, and Carmazan will not send them to me until I officially quit. I don't think I had officially quit yet. Oh, and that's a dangerous. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, well, what dangerous. that would have done is that would have left me in a never, never land between yeah. having a job and not having a job and having a job waiting, which is promised, but I don't know if this guy is going to be good on his word because I had always heard terrible things about Mel Carmison. okay? Yeah, I, I just had a few meetings with him, and he was uh, civil but very businesslike. Yeah, and I, I, I finally said, oh, I can't do that <clears throat> because I'm not really? going to quit my job till you make sure I have another one to go to. Yeah. And I didn't realize how honorable a man Mel Carmazan is. I realized that when I suddenly worked for him at Sirius XM, uh, when I was at Sirius, and I got to know him a little bit. You know, I saw him in the break room one day, and I went up to him, and I said, Hi, Mel, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Alex Bennett. He says, Of course I know who you are, Alex. I'm a fan. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I always thought he was a stand-up guy. Dan Mason, and I though. suddenly, I suddenly realized. Well, Dan Mason was working for him at the time. Yeah, and, exactly. And uh, I just said, you know, this guy. I made a big mistake <laughs> by not going to work <laughs> for this guy, because he really is okay. Not that he had flattered me or whatever, but the fact that he was an upstanding guy. He gives his word, and he mm -hmm. sticks by it. And what he didn't want to do is he didn't want to be perceived as stealing me away from them. Ah. Okay. Because he wouldn't want people stealing people away from him. So yes. I had to quit first before he could hand me the contract. And I get had I done it, he would have handed me the contract because he was an honorable man. Keep, yeah. Kept his word. Uh, but uh, that's why I stayed in San Francisco. And made, I think, yeah. maybe one of the biggest mistakes of my life and my career. Because well, had you know, I, but Ben, you were doing the best that you could with the information that yeah, you had. Yeah, you're right. All uh, right, yeah. But if I had gone with uh, Mel Carmazan, and, and by the way, a great guy, just a great guy. I just, you know, I think the reason I lasted at Sirius XM as long as I did was him. The minute he mm -hmm. was out the door, my job was in jeopardy, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, yeah. uh, he, he was a great guy, just a terrific guy. But anyway, that's, that's a story about me almost leaving Live 105 in San Francisco. But I decided to stay, and they said, well, we'll, give you, we'll get you syndicated. And they never did. Yeah, syndication, man, was the magic ticket. Well, it was starting to be, courtesy yeah. of Stern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Stern was like, he was like the first lucky recipient of the syndication. Somebody I know came up with a statement the other day, and I love the statement. He said, you paved the road that Howard Stern drove on. I agree exactly. I, I think that's a very apt analogy. Yeah, I, I think it is. I think it is. I, I like that. I, it's, my ego loves that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we were talking about uh, last time, and we should get to it because we promised we would get to it chiropractors yeah and you're not a fan of them 
Marjorie yes. goes to a chiropractor, God, twice a month, right? Yes. And For what particular ailment? Her back. You okay. know, her back. But her back is still trashed. No matter what this guy does, it's still trashed. Maybe he makes it feel better for about an hour and a half, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I had some, uh, what was the back problem? I can't remember what it was exactly. Uh, so I, she said, you got to go to my chiropractor. She was always saying this. So I said, okay, I'll go. So I went to him. He didn't do anything. It didn't he did, improve, not he even did slightly. did some mumbo jumbo of like uh, playing with my back and stuff, and I walked out, and what was ailing me was still ailing me. And he said, "Well, you know, you can't do it all in one visit." Right. And I said, it's, "Well, yeah, Marjorie, have, Marjorie has been doing this for how many visits? Like eight hundred over the years with you, <laughs> you yeah. know." And and I never went back. Well. Yeah, if you're not getting results, then there's no incentive. Well, I mean, I go to a doctor. I say, uh, oh, hey, listen, doc, my back is aching. And uh, he, he gives, you know, he'll, like, do some adjustments or whatever he needs to do. And they'll give me some pills to go home with. Yeah, and prescribe here's some me celebrate. Some. That's well, he, he can do something that a chiropractor can't do. Prescribe. <laughs> right. And you know, that is the key. Well, yeah. The only thing a chiropractor can do is send you home with aspirin. Okay? Yeah. You know. Yeah, forget it. Uh, I want I want some kind of oh, shall we say, immediate result. No, I don't mm -hmm. expect to be a hundred percent better. I don't be, I expect to be one percent better, just somewhat better. You know, yeah. and, and I I've talked to doctors who've said if you go to a doctor and you see him and you don't feel better than when you went in then don't go back you know you should Very be able true. yeah you like should. i went to yeah. we were on a cruise and so i went to an acupuncturist because mm -hmm. i have um compound fractures in my back mm -hmm. and plus the fact that we were going to these you know walking three and four miles up these ruins of 800 steps yeah did not help surprisingly enough. And so I went to the acupuncturist and I felt some relief. And I remember thinking if you were available all the time, if a person could have like an in-house acupuncturist, I think it would help. Well, now, I mean, acupuncture, they don't know how acu whether acupuncture works or not. All we know is that billions of Chinese go to acupuncturists, okay? Mm -hmm. And they, they are taken care of by acupuncturists. And it is said that the, uh, there was this guy, I read a book, and he went to China and he had some problem. He had to go to the hospital and they gave him acupuncture, but it didn't work. And he said, it's kind of a belief in it that helps it work. <laughs> Just you, like you, most things. You, like you know, he, well, he said that's what it is. It's so many people in China use it and swear by it. And uh, uh, it, it is the main form of medicine in China. You know, mm -hmm. uh, is acupuncture, and uh, he said it's because they believe it works. Right, it's it, been tried and true, at least tried, and with some yeah. success over the centuries. It, it, yeah. it, you know, I can't say the same for chiropractic. Well, know. my cousin is a chiropractor, and he explained to me because we're cousins. Um, exactly what are the money-making components of a chiropractic practice mm -hmm. and what are the actual good. And uh, the, I wasn't quite happy with the balance. <laughs> the balance <laughs> did not. Versus. <laughs> yeah, but he's a good chiropractor. He's the one in Lafayette, Indiana. No, Lafayette, Louisiana. Now listen, if they just admit that they're, they, they do a good job of uh, realigning your back or just, you know, giving you, you know... Uh, giving you a good massage, okay, fine. Yeah. But when they yeah. try and put all the science behind it, and, oh, we, we can cure migraines with it and so on and so forth, goodbye, I'll see you later. Yeah. You know. And But you know what's uh, good for migraines are being used widely now is Botox. Yes, Botox. yes, Botox yeah. is good. And Botox can also help with incontinence. What they do basically is insert Botox into your bladder, and it stiffens it up enough so that you don't wee yourself at the Golden Corral. Really? It's, yeah. It's well, being used you know, we, uh, well, we, we're finding out that certain drugs do things better than they should, than what they were originally prescribed for. 
Right, I mean, all ladies. I, I can't remember what Botox was originally prescribed for. Oh, vanity. Take it but, away. But no, but, no, but besides that, though, I think it was for something else as well, if I'm not mistaken. Some Perhaps. medical condition. You it's know. a versatile little bugger. It's kind of like uh, the, that stuff for uh, diabetes. Uh, 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 what's the name of it? Ozempic. Oh my you gosh, know. Ozempic is everywhere. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's a it's a it's an it, it's a shot for uh, uh, diabetes, but it mm -hmm. makes you lose weight. So people are now using it to lose weight, and doctors are sh shooting people up with Ozempic. Yeah. They just don't realize what's going to happen when they stop the Ozempic. With their diabetes levels? Or no, no, they just get fat again. <laughs> as long as you keep taking yeah. the Ozempic, it keeps the weight off. But the minute you stop taking the Ozempic, it's not like you take the Ozempic, you get down 30 pounds, and then you stop it. Because once you stop it, you're going to go right back up again. Yeah, maybe you can taper off it and then kind of re-educate your eating yeah, habits. Yeah. That might be a possibility. Hey, we, but we, we're over time here. Well, my we're, goodness. We've run over time. <laughs> it's, the, yeah, the radio popo -po is going to come get us. The radio what? Popo, -po, the police. Oh, I Pete, just heard. police popo. -po. <laughs> yes, my niece hangs out with many people of the African-American persuasion, and that's yeah. where she picked up popo. -po. That and the lifestyle she was leading to uh, let her to the popo. Popo, poo-poo, popo, papa. Hey, Talk to you later, kiddo. Okay. Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Now in its 10th year, this is Gadnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, thank you so much to the lovely and attractive, uh, uh, what's her name? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Okay, anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, what are we? Well, I was okay. I'm wondering. What, my audio seems a little well, it seems a little bass, but that's okay. I don't care. You know. Anyway, uh, we have one person waiting. One person waiting. Okay, listen. Here's what's going to happen uh, tomorrow night. Excuse me. Let me do this. Oh, there. That's much better. Hold on a second. It'll. It'll calm down in a moment. There you go. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to do a show tomorrow night. Uh, and here's the reason why. Tomorrow night is uh, the night that uh, Kamala Harris uh, uh, accepts her nomination uh, for president of the United States. And uh, I think a lot of people here are going to want to watch that. I think it's also the reason why we don't have that many people right now, because they're all watching the... Uh, the uh, uh, convention. So tomorrow night, I'm not going to do a show. Tomorrow night, I just want you all to watch the Democratic convention. The other problem is, and I got to tell you, this has just been terrible. It's the one terrible thing the Democrats have done. They are idiots. They are morons. And here's what it is. And you've heard people talk about it. Uh, the other night, uh, I was waiting for... Uh, let me see here. Who, who was going to? Who was the main speaker on uh, uh, on on Monday night? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember now. Oh, jeez, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, they didn't go on until eleven twenty-five. Now, come on, eleven twenty-five. To begin with, that's eleven twenty-five here in New York. And people are going to bed because they have to go to work the next day. So the entire West East Coast was completely lost to the Democrats and to whatever major speech was being given at that time. I'm trying to remember who was it. Gee, my mind is such a blank these days. I mean, I can tell you who the one is tonight. It's Waltz, and tomorrow night it's uh, it's Kamala. Uh, but on Monday night it was. God, I'm trying to remember now. Oh, oh, it was Biden. Of course, it was Biden. And Biden gave his speech, and I wanted to watch it. Everybody wanted to. Marjorie wanted to watch it. She couldn't watch it. She got so tired, she had to go to sleep. She had to watch it the next morning. Um, 
what happens is a lot of people can't do that. Now, here is what happens. It's uh, it's 1030 in uh, or 1025, let's say, in uh, Chicago. OK. If they did it at uh, 925 in Chicago, you would still get the Midwest getting it at 925. You would also get the West Coast getting it at dinner time, and you would still have people watching it here in New York. But they just started putting it on too late. And tonight they're doing the same thing again. Waltz wasn't on when I was looking a few minutes ago. Uh, they had Oprah going, and then they had the, uh, the governor of Maryland uh, giving a speech. And I don't know, maybe maybe he's on already. I don't know. I'll have to ask our, our people here who are assembled and ready to go on. So, you know, it's really, really pretty terrible what they did. It was not very good uh, for the people who really wanted to see these people and couldn't do it. I mean, I, I know that here in New York, even though New Yorkers, are, uh, they stay up late and they, you know, they party hardy and all of that. You know, they got to go to work the next day, and uh, to ask them to stay up till, till say, midnight or after midnight, maybe midnight 15, to see the speech by Biden was asking a bit much. And it was really sheer stupidity on the part of the, uh, of the people who created the convention. I mean, and they were telling everybody, oh, hey, he's going to be on at 10 o'clock tonight. And then we're going through one speech and another speech and another speech and another speech until we're finally up to our asses in, in, in hearing people pretty much all say exactly the same thing. There, there was no really great originality in the speeches. Uh, the content was pretty much the same. A, a certain liberal amount of bashing of Trump and the fact that he's a felon and uh, this thing and that thing. And uh, it wasn't until we got to last night with Michelle Obama and Barack Obama, who also went on late, okay, uh, but uh, Barack Obama, that we got to, uh, 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 you know, some kind of uh, a decency where, where, where the speeches were concerned, where it wasn't a constant bashing of, uh, of Trump. It was a jibing to a certain extent, but, you know... Anyway, all I'm saying is the Democrats were stupid, okay, Peer, period. I, and uh, I don't know if Charlie will agree with me or Jeff Stein will agree with me, but we'll go to them and see what they have to say here. Let's go look. There we go. Okay. All right. Hello to Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Are you okay, Jeff? Agree with me, or Jeff Stein? No, no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Hello, Jeff. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, and we can hear you. Okay, you don't have to turn anything else up. Just leave it the yes. way it is. Okay. That's fine. And of course, we have our uh, good friend Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. How are you this evening, Charlie? There he is. Uh, here now. I was watching it on YouTube. Uh, I guess there was a delay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Have you been watching the uh, convention tonight? No. Yes. No. This is more important. <laughs> I, I, I can see that. I can see that later tonight on YouTube or something. Yeah. I don't mind people complaining. You know, they're going to be replays all day tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so but I mean, I, Just it, go to bed. Yeah, but there were a lot of people who stayed up to watch it because they were told that Biden was going to go on at ten o'clock, and then here it is, you know, eleven twenty-five, and uh, still no mm. Biden. Okay, so I mean, they got to go to bed. All right. Yeah. And then they get a little pissed off at the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party didn't live up to their, you know, to their schedule. Well, at least the Democratic Party had people you'd want to listen to. Yeah, well, yeah, but as I say, they were all giving the same speech over and over and over again, you know. Uh, 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 the only time it got original is, I think, probably the best speaker I've ever seen at a convention was Michelle last night. Mm -hmm. And she, she was phenomenal. She was just phenomenal. 
And I mean, and and Barack was terrific too. But we've seen him a lot, so we're used to him, mm -hmm. you know. But she doesn't speak that often. And the speech she gave, I mean, you know, there have been people over the years who have said she should run for president. And I'm sure mm -hmm. last night that didn't abate that discussion, you know, because they watched her give a speech and they went, doesn't get much better than that, you know. Well, she had already said no several times. Before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. She didn't want it. She didn't want to be, no. she didn't want to be first lady. She, you know, she simply went, uh, kicking and screaming with Barack to the uh, to the <laughs> Oval Office, you know, and she became a great first lady. But, you know, I mean, she was not that fond of Washington politics and having to deal with all of that, you know, and so on. But, uh, gee, I mean, they, what a couple, huh? What a couple. Yeah. Uh, just like Trump and Melania, huh? What a couple. Yeah, I mean, it, two people just absolutely adore each other. You know, and it's not fake. That's not fake. No. Nope. Um, nope. That speech last night, last night was so good that I decided I was going to watch the speeches on Fox. Not for any other reason. The picture is the same on every network. But I wanted to see what they were going to say after the speeches. Mm -hmm. And I was gobsmacked. Did anybody watch Fox last night? No. No. They sat there going, she was great. He was terrific. And uh, who was the person that went on before them? Oh, uh, the uh, first, uh, the the uh, future first gentleman, Imhoff. Oh, yeah. uh, they said he was terrific. I mean, they were all gushing over how good these people were. And normally these are people that just bash them constantly. Yeah. And yeah. here's Fox these people, these commentators on Fox going, boy, wasn't she terrific? So yeah. they did this when Trump was running in 2020. They were all pro-Trump until it became somewhat evident that Trump probably wouldn't win. And so they switched parties towards the end. Just Who? Like Who? Fox News. I don't think Fox News ever was positive towards uh, Obama. I'm not talking about Obama. I'm talking about Biden. Biden? I never yeah, heard that. When be Biden got when when he got closer and it made it, and uh, the election looked more like Biden was going to become president and then Trump, not Trump, they dropped Trump and went pro Biden. I don't remember them doing that. Does anybody here remember them doing that? Yeah. I don't watch Fox News, so I have no. Oh idea. well, that's a great excuse. <laughs> Josh, you got no picture. Josh, are you there? Josh, you're not. You got no picture. Oh, there he is. There you okay. There you are. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I can hear you now. Yeah. All right. I might have to call you back. It said I had a poor, poor connection. Yeah, you, you're kind of like uh, out of sync and everything. Come, I'll call back. Call right back. Okay. All right. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, uh, it was uh, amazing what I saw. You know. And they said, boy, that was she, somebody, one of them, I think, even said that's one of the best speeches I've seen anybody ever give at a convention. Uh, Wait till you get to my age. Hmm? You, get so, you get so forgetful. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was just amazed at, at them. Uh, and it wasn't like, yeah, they're still pro-Trump. They still excuse everything that Trump does. But uh, they had to admit. These were three great speakers last night, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought she was wonderful. And Imhoff was charming as hell, you know. I mean, it just gave you an insight into their marriage, and it was just all the fun things mm -hmm. in a marriage. And uh, uh, the, the convention has been pretty joyful overall. Uh, uh, maybe it's over getting over joyful because I, I got a, a diabetes last night from all the <laughs> all the sugary sweet quality of it but uh, uh, you know I mean it really was amazing it was amazing uh, and uh, I uh, it's always great to see Obama and it's always great to see Michelle and it's always great to hear them talk about their lives and uh, uh, it was uh, it was a wonderful time um, uh, you know, for a guy, for a foreigner, he does okay, you know, giving the speech. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know. <laughs> the guy who was born in Kenya. You know, so. uh, Did you hear Clinton? I hear Clinton. He's yeah, talking tonight. Yeah, Clinton was okay, you know. A little... Oh. Wait a little. minute, he's a rate. Clinton's race vote tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I missed that part. Yeah, oh. He's uh, he's the same age as mine, I think. As you? As you? Yeah, Almost 90, yeah. Wow. No, he said he was in 70-something or other. Yeah, he, uh, he's, he, you know, he, he, he looked healthy, okay? He just didn't sound healthy, okay? Yeah. And, and that just might be because he's getting older and his voice is changing and he's, you know, he's sounding old. Um, I was could, surprised how good Hillary looked. I, I saw some excerpts. Yeah, she looked fine. From last night. I missed her. Although I saw, I saw her just, she was standing and they saw pictures of him while Clinton was speaking. See, I would have, I guess, I would have kept the Clintons away. Uh, yeah. The only reason being that the Clintons um, are, have a certain, uh, a, a certain reputation among those people that hate them. Okay, so why, why bring that out? Mm -hmm. uh, how can you possibly hate the Obamas? You can dislike their politics, oh, but you can't hate them. There's nothing. There was never any scandal while he was president, or scandal after he was president. You know, mm -hmm. one of the most honest people ever to inhabit the uh, the Oval Office. Um, but on the other hand, Clinton had a lot of baggage with him. You know, yeah. Yeah. screwed up <laughs> with Democrats with girls. Up. Yeah, yeah. Young. I think Clinton did good as president. I thought he was a very good president, but that doesn't matter. I'm saying that, you know, like they've asked movie stars to stay away or to not, you know, make their presence a big deal at the convention because they, they don't want people to think that this is a celebrity deal, okay? And uh, there are celebrities there, and they had Mindy Kaling emceeing tonight. Uh, and, and so on, and I think they're going to have John Legend. See, they're going to sing tonight or tomorrow. He was already night. singing uh, oh, oh, when he, we started. Oh, he already sang, and it's in beyond. Yeah, he was singing. I saw in the chat. Oh, that he was on stage singing. Oh, right now, you mean? Yeah. I mean, they, they haven't. Kind of talk they, anyway. They don't yeah. have him on yet. You know, they don't have walls on yet. My God. I should you know, turn you can on watch the it on YouTube tomorrow. Huh? You can watch it on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah, you can watch it on YouTube yeah. tomorrow, but that's not as much fun as seeing it when it happens. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, and uh, and people will go tomorrow, they'll forget to go look for it. You know? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, well, but I'm up a lot later, and you're up to, I'm up till 4 a.m. in California. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I'll, I'll watch it during the night. Yeah, well, you get to watch it uh, right now, you know, and it's like 7.20 uh, or something like that out there. 8.20. 820. 8.20. Wow, it's even getting late out there. Happens. And after they'd had that kerfuffle on, uh, on, on uh, Monday uh, with uh, Biden getting on very late in the, in the, on the East Coast, they didn't do anything to change the problem the next day. They had to get enough cups of coffee in them to keep. And them you know away. what's wrong if if the, if the president spoke at seven o'clock California time, would that have bothered you? You're no. home. You're you're eating dinner. You know, maybe you've just finished dinner. You know, you watch the president. But instead, they waited until well, by by the time he got on, it was like eight thirty in California. It's just that you could have seen it. It would have been convenient to people all over the country if they just gotten them on by like ten, fifteen, something like that, you know. But anyway, what do you think about it, Josh? Have you been watching it? Uh, not. I watched Monday, but I couldn't watch last night, and I've watched some tonight. And you watched some tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why couldn't you watch it last night? Just not convenient. Well, 
I got to tell you, uh, Monday, late evening, mm -hmm. I took what is legal in my state, a THC capsule. <laughs> and I didn't feel anything for four or five hours, so I took yeah. another. Oh, oh no, no. no. <laughs> and that was a huge, huge, huge <laughs> fucking mistake, even for someone who does hard shit that I've done. It, I never really was into that shit, so I tried it, and I was fucked up beyond belief, so... <laughs> Been there, Sorry. done that. I'm uh, just yeah. now able to hold a conversation. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I was in bed for 36 hours after. I mean, <laughs> really? I didn't eat for 40. I mean, I, I'm serious. I didn't eat for 40 uh, hours. I didn't. Uh, it's, it reminds me. Of up, the I didn't fucking do shit. It reminds me of the time that Marjorie uh, got some THC can chocolate, yes. right? Yeah. And she yeah. ate the whole bar. She thought that you could eat the whole bar. Good. And Those she was she she was wrecked for three days. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the third day. I mean, like <laughs> it started happening during Biden's speech because I remember coming back down and I mean obviously I was fucked up, but I mean I was just like, he's still talking, you know, what the fuck? This guy never shuts up. I mean, it was just like <laughs> I don't know. I sat here for six or seven hours after that until the morning when my wife came down and I was just like, I, I fucking almost called the ambulance. You know, I was like, I'm serious. <laughs> like I was going to go outside and just call the fucking ambulance because <laughs> shit was fucking bad, man. I mean, for four or five hours, I was fucking not comprehensible at all whatsoever. Really? My, uh, my, my 24, fuck. my 24 year old nephew fuck, went man. to a concert. And he meant to take his gummies with him, but left them on the counter. My my, my ninety year old mother never even thought that they could have marijuana in them, oh, so she God. ate all four of them. Oh, and, and ended up in the hospital. Yeah, man. You know, I, and she was she was a mess. I couldn't feel my face on the right side. <laughs> uh, I'm fucking oh. serious, man. I, I've, I've done it. I don't do edibles. Man. I tried to watch television. Get... I don't do I edibles I tried to watch either. TV, and I started watching, like, the new season of the Vikings. And I'm dead. I mean, like, their lips and the words were not, it didn't match. And it was fucking driving me <laughs> is fucking there a, is insane. There, wait, I mean, is, like, is, I couldn't. Is there a new season of the Vikings? Yeah, it just came out. It's the last oh. one of the one that followed up the original or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing so much work, I've been, like, waiting until I could pay attention to watch it, because if I watch it, I'm doing something else to distract me, but I don't know how much I watched, like, maybe a half an hour or something. I, I fucking couldn't. I just turned the TV well, off and what fucking if, smash uh, it up, because I was like, these motherfuckers are talking, and, and, this, and I can't. You did, the, making, you did this when? Monday? Monday night, yeah. Monday night. It's, so it's how how, night. how is Biden when you're that stoned? <laughs> Honestly, man, I really can't remember. I mean... It was pretty fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, but I, I don't know. It was. I mean, he was. He seemed like he did okay. I remember afterwards. The only thing they really talked about was how late it was on, which I agreed. You know, was a little bit. Not really sure why they went. I mean, they said they ran behind and all that. You know, and I get. Yeah, that, well, I'm. I'm telling you, that was be a bad, that. bad deal. And then tonight, I don't think. Uh, our, our our main act went on today. Waltz didn't get on till. He maybe just came on. He's he's not even started speaking yet. So it's eleven twenty three. I guess. So they're doing yeah. the same thing tonight with Walls that they did with uh, with. Uh, didn't they learn anything with Biden the other night? They don't care about the East Coast. They should, because you got all the Carolinas and the West Virginias and the Floridas and all of that. You and know. he just accepted the Democratic vice president nomination. Yeah. Yeah, so. he just he just started speaking maybe thirty seconds ago or whatever. Yeah. I accept your nomination. <laughs> maybe maybe you ought, should have gave him one of your uh whatever, whatever you ate, Josh. Fuck. Hmm. That shit. I'd love to see Trump, Trump that high. Fuck. No, you wouldn't. He'd be slower oh, than I, he is already. The last time know. I had an edible, I couldn't stop the room from spinning for about 12 hours. Yes. I had to well, lay down and bury well, my I just, head. I just don't like edibles because I, you don't really know how strong they are. No. You no. know? And and sometimes they're just right, you know, and they've apportioned them correctly. Right. But, but you don't really know. 
And, uh, and sometimes you take one, and three hours later you go, nothing's happening. I'll take another one. That's why I prefer I, joint. I that that too. That's yeah. why I prefer a joint or to a lesser extent a vape, yep. because yep. I I know I take a puff and I know I'm going to get high. You know, and, minutes, and if I take two puffs, it. I'm going to get higher. But yep. uh, you know, it's not it's not something I can't control. You know, so whatever. You know, so. But I, uh, I thought that uh, I, I, I thought that the uh, uh, Michelle was terrific. Imhoff was wonderful. Uh, Barack was Barack, you know. He, he did a, a, a very nice job. But I'll have the to go back and watch all. But that. the problem I'm having is if you watch this and watch all these people come up, they all give basically the same speech, you know. Oh. Pam, uh, Kamala is wonderful, uh, and uh, uh, she's uh, terrific. And uh, you know, she she came from up from nothing, and she became the you know the prosecutor. Blah 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 blah. And she's one of us. She's one of the people. And then the other part of that is you then go into a mode of bashing Trump, which I don't know if I would do that at this point. Because the whole messaging that's out there is so positive that to start bashing Trump kind of impinges on that 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 joyousness that you've created. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, I mean they they are all given you know the same general theme you know that they're trying to hit on. You can tell. So, well, I think I think um, uh, that's good, but. I think that Barack, who basically is the best stand-up in America, you know, I mean, this guy's timing for comedy is impeccable, okay? And when he did that line last night about, then what's all this about size? He says, <laughs> you know, and he and he, he puts his hands together like this and about, about size, and then he goes, he looks at his hands and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> and he, and and then he he kind of looks at it and moves on, you know. <laughs> I thought that was pure genius. He know? got a lot of grief that from that great. in the media. He's gotten a lot of what? Grief in the no, media. No, he didn't get any grief for that. I who? What I kind don't know. Of, I looked it up. Everybody for you. everybody was talking about it because it was so funny. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. Yeah. No. Trump, he, Trump didn't like it, I'm sure. Well, of course oh, Trump didn't no. like it. Trump doesn't like anything. Trump doesn't have a sense of humor. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. I heard somebody said that Trump was trying to soften his uh, approach. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I didn't hear... Well, it's not the working, right. you know. Yeah. Well... He could stay off the news for a week. That would be softened. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, um, uh, Trump doesn't know how to handle this. That's his problem. No. He, he totally can't handle this. Doesn't make uh, sense to him. He doesn't understand about uh, a woman running for president who happens to be of color. Uh, and he just doesn't know what to do. He's, uh, he's completely gobsmacked. He had a whole game plan with Biden, and, and he's complaining. We spent millions of dollars uh, getting a whole thing yep. against Biden, and then they switch people on us. Oh, we, we, we. You know, you spent the million bucks? Good. You know, you were wasting your money. You, you were, you know. Uh, I mean, it, 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 you don't spend a million dollars going after your opponent. You spend a million dollars convincing your people that you can do the job. Sure. You know? What I still don't hear from him is how he's going to help the country. Oh, there's not a nothing. No. Nothing. He has no idea what to think about it. Well, let's get rid of Obamacare. That that went over real well when he in 2016 <laughs> didn't work. You know, he still wants to do it. I mean, it's not going to work this time either. Well, what he's doing, the problem with Trump is he's he's using a playbook that's about uh, eight years old, mm. you know, and he's not fighting the same person, and he's yep. not fighting the same fight, 
And what won once for him, and he really didn't win because he, he was certainly was three million votes short of, of a popular vote, um, but, you know, whatever worked for him back then, you don't work the same playbook now. This is a whole different game, and he yeah, doesn't know how to, to play I it. I can't wait till the debate. I can't wait till election. He's going to smash him. I think, I think, mm -hmm. uh, would you agree or disagree with me on this one, Josh? It's going to be a rout. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, we'll see after this convention how how mm -hmm. they're looking. But, I mean, the thing is, I don't know if I'm ready to say that yet. But at the same time, if you were arguing that point to me, you would have a whole lot of evidence to point to over the last couple of weeks that keeps developing. And it would be hard for me to tell you that you were wrong, right? You know, yeah. so I want to I want to see it be a route because number one, I want I want to see Trump hurt. Okay, I want to see Trump hurt, and um, I want to see him in pain. All right, and uh, it's sad to be painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to see him in pain, and I well, think don't that, get a bump after the convention too. They're going so, to get a good bump after this convention. I mean, pe people, you know, people love to join people who are having a good time, okay? Yeah. And I think that that's what's going to happen here. I think people are going to go, even people who would normally not vote Democratic are going to say, I want to have fun with the rest of those people, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and and uh, it is a joyous kind of thing, mission that they're on, and it's wor it's playing itself out that way. And I'm I'm you know I feel so good when I watch it. You know. So Tr Trump did this to a small extent. Kamala did this to a big extent. They brought a lot of people in that are influencers, uh, that are not mainstream media, that are just podcasters out there, and they got them in the crowd there. And so these podcasters every night are reporting on their, they got millions of people following them, kind of like Gabnet. I didn't and see any pod, uh, I, didn't, I didn't see any podcasters there. Oh yeah, they Who? had one on stage with them the the first night. Who? I don't know what his name was or her name. They they have podcasters. Look it up in the news. It's in the news too. No, they that probably they, have that, allowed podcasters to be there like they allow radio stations to be there and, and probably, networks to be there. Probably, but it's just one more source that a lot of younger people especially go to, these podcasts and follow them. Oh, I think that probably Trump allows them in, too. He just doesn't allow... He, 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 he only he, allows the, the right-wing podcasters yeah. in, but he allows mm -hmm. them in. But, it, I mean, it's the same as letting Fox in the door or letting anybody else in the door. You know, so Except, well, I guess the podcasters put their spin on it too, just like Fox would. So, well, no, but podcasters are just as uh, vile as uh, as the media. You know, uh, but, but but she's thinking outside the box. She's bringing it in. He brought he brought in a few, but she brought no, but in. But if you don't think that uh, you, if you don't think that uh, that. Um, um, who, who do you call Trump is using letting podcasters in? You're nuts. Oh, he did let him in. They said he had like 1,600 and she's got like 2,800 or something like that that are actually in I mean, the convention. All I know is that when you go to the convention, they have a thing called Radio Row. And that's where all the radio programs are. And that's like where we were with Sirius XM and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that because of the influence now of podcasters, mm -hmm. They're allowing people who are podcasters to be part of that broadcast row. So I, Probably. you know, it, it, it would seem inconceivable that they didn't do that. I think it's a smart move. A lot of young people listen to these podcasts day in and day out, and some of us older people but, but too. But young people are not reliable voters. That's the yeah, problem. but all they got to do is vote. I say they're not reliable voters. Okay. You know, they don't necessarily get out and vote. I think, I think this is going to be like 2020. I think we're going to see a lot of blacks, a lot of women, and a lot of college-age kids because this is their first time that they can vote. And they're going to vote for Kamala because they see her talking more about what they're interested in than Trump Well, or, or Biden. Well, how, how is she talking about what they're interested in? 
I mean, all I know uh, is that when I was that age, all I was interested in was getting laid. Yeah, well, um, I don't know. She just, yeah. I mean, she, I, I think they can relate to her better because she's she doesn't act like she's I don't know how old she is sixty five sixty whatever. Um, she she acts younger. She's more vibrant than Trump or or Biden. Um, she just you know a lot of the, they're asking a, they're they're surveying. A lot of these students in colleges, and they're saying, well, well, it was Biden, we weren't going to vote. But now that it's Kamala. When has, uh, let me ask Josh this. Josh, when has the youth vote ever been a determining factor? No, I don't really know for sure. I mean, I mean, I seemed like Obama had a pretty good coalition there, you know, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I've never really sat back and look at the breakup of the electoral results and the age groups and all that. But I mean, it seemed like Obama had a pretty strong yeah. uh, youth vote, you know, mm -hmm. I don't really know about the Clinton's two terms. You know, I, I, I don't really think it was as nearly as big a factor for him as it was later for like Obama. The internet's a lot Biden bigger. Biden had young Obama people voting for him in 2020. What, yeah. what were you saying? What did you say, uh, Charlie? I said Biden had young people voting for him. In fact, some people said that made the difference. That's how he won in, in some of those close states. Yep. It was young people really? coming out. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I yep. just I just have always found that the younger voter, while they may be act excited and all of that, they don't really get out and make a difference. You know, who makes a difference nope. are the older vo are the older voters. Yeah, yep. yeah, <clears throat> mainly because you got nothing else to do but vote. Right, that's <laughs> <You> right. <know? laughs> I'll go wait ten hours online. Yeah, got me too. Else to do. Me too. In fact, during uh, during COVID, that's exactly what you had to do. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was. You know, I. I but I think that um, I, I. I just think that there's a real sense of joyousness here. And I think that all those people who are on the fence, they're in the middle. I think they're going to go for uh, for Kamala. Uh, I I think it. What it is is the weariness of Trump. You know, people are just tired of Trump. They're tired of the same old stuff. They're tired of the same old act. They're tired of the bashing. Uh, they're tired of the incivility. And I think that that those people. Who are not all the way on the right, you know. The people, the people are going to vote for Trump are going to vote for Trump, and that's it. But that's only like thirty-five percent, you know. So it, it's going to depend upon those other people, you know. <laughs> getting out. What were you kind of agreeing with me, Josh? Well, no, I was just going to say, you know, I. I mean, I know what you're saying. You know, yeah, I, I guess I agreed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, you'd agree with me on anything right now because you're still coming down off the THC. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I was just catching some of his speech there, was all. Hmm? I was just catching some of his speech there. I was just watching the TV a little bit. He's still talking. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks like it's pretty upbeat, pretty fiery. Looks yeah, like. yeah. From what, I can, from what I can tell, yeah, looks like it. Yeah. But I think enough of the Trump bashing. I think that you know, call him on things when he says stuff that's wrong. It's absolutely within the purview. But enough with the bashing. You know, it's it, we've done it. Everybody knows that Trump is a terrible human being, and we move on from there and and show what a wonderful human being Kamala is. You know, and they're presenting her as a pretty upright person. You know. And you don't hear the the most they can come out against. Like I love it when they try to come out with stuff against walls, because you know, I mean, come on, this is dad. This is uh, this is your uncle. This is your, you know, this is the teacher you had the teacher you had in school that you liked, you know. Mm. Um, and on top of that, he he's he's a sportsman and uses guns, you know. So he's got it all. He's got the whole package. 
And yet, what are the Republicans saying? You know what they're doing or saying over at Fox? That he's a, perhaps he's a sleeper agent for the Chinese. <laughs> because he went to China 30 times, sometimes 30 times. He, he but taught he, in China. But he taught in China, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And he got married in China, you know. Oh, he must be a sleeper agent. Right, the Manchurian candidate. Okay, fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> I haven't heard that, but I it, it wouldn't surprise oh, me. Oh, it was the headline yesterday on, on I don't Drudge. Watch, I don't watch much news anymore. Yeah, the Fox was saying that he, he's a sleeper agent. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you know. Fox it, says so, it's got to be the truth. But, I mean, is that the most you've got against him? Oh, the tampons? Is that is that the most you can get against him? You know, tampon Tim? What? I hope this guy flips some of the states for Kamala around where he's governor at. Well, he's going to... He, a lot of those Midwestern states are going to feel good about his message. Yeah. You know? And, and, and he knows, and, he, and more than that, he knows how to talk to them. Yeah. You know, that's important. Yeah. And he also lived in several states. Yes. In the Midwest. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, in Kamala, it's just, it's just the whole thing is, there's it, it, very little they have against them. And then when they call Kamala the closest thing to a communist, I mean, come on. You know, she's pretty much in the middle somewhere around there, you know. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? You don't know? I think, I, I think she's very um, left-wing. I, I don't think... To the extent that you could call her a communist? No, no, no. All obviously right. not. But, but And I think Waltz was a good choice because he's... Kind of like a moderator, and he'll he'll balance out the scale. I don't know that she isn't moderate herself. How do you think? What do you think, Josh? Is she moderate or is she uh, is she a real lefty pinko? I don't know if it's quite that far. I mean, I, they're going to try to play it like that. I I don't think it's quite that far. I mean, I'm sure she's more progressive than they're really out there pushing for because you know a lot of what they're pushing for is. Just kind of the anti-Trump deal, you know, the non-chaos and just vote for her kind of, you know, for the good vibe of it all and everything and to just not go back to this chaos and all that. So I think she's more progressive than you think. But I don't always think that that matters in some ways because presidents will work within what they're given, you know, and if she's got, you know, the House by a few votes and the Senate by a few votes and the White House, it doesn't mean they're going to be able to force all these crazy policies or anything like that, you know, because it's hard to get stuff done. And, you know, in some ways it should be. So I don't, I don't think it's anything that I would be concerned about. I mean, I'm sure she's more progressive than what we might think, but I, I don't think that it's far left or anything like that. Yeah. You know. But I mean, it, but it, what's his name? Trump calls her, says she's a communist. Yeah, right. I Which, mean, you know, I, I got to tell you, uh, 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 Donald, <laughs> This concept that somebody's a communist is about 40 years out of date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, even the com even even the, the Soviets aren't really communists at this point. <laughs> you know? Terrorists, but not communists. The terrorists, but not communists. Exactly. What's so funny is Trump loves Kim Jong-un, and he's definitely a communist. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Trump needs to look in the mirror a little more often. Oh, another great line that uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, Michelle Obama had last night was that uh, Trump doesn't realize that he's going after a black job. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was one. that was a great line. Yeah, really a, a very good line. Yeah. Um, I don't know who wrote it for her because it sounds like a. Com uh, Comedy she's writer a, wrote it. She's for a smart woman. She yeah. might have written that one herself. She could have I was written thinking it, the same but, thing. But I, I would tend to think they have a few comedy writers, Maybe. you know, there uh, who can write I a one liner for them that might work. 
you know. I don't think it was comedy. I think it was truthfulness. Yeah. But it was comedy. It was a funny line. It was just a really funny line. It got a laugh. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Okay. I'll buy that. Yeah. So, um, the, so uh, pretty much that's the uh, that's the convention. You know, it, it, it's just one speech after another. That's pretty much the same speech. And then, oh, Oprah was speaking tonight. You know, as, as, yeah, as, she already spoke, didn't she? Huh? Oh uh, yeah. She yeah. already spoke, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. was the opening opener, whatever. Yes, I thought. Yeah. Probably about an hour ago, she was on stage. Yeah. And uh, you know, <laughs> she's I, they've got my vote now that Oprah's there. You know, <laughs> I don't know. They 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 don't want a lot of the big movie stars showing up. They don't want George Clooney getting up there. They don't want no. Him. huh? No, they don't want Clooney there. Yeah, he was the first one to go public with the Biden's got to step down. Yeah, yeah, but he was right. Boy, Biden sure got a lot of uh, positive attitude from the crowd when he was on stage. Well, I mean, the thing is that what Biden did by not running was cement his 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 legacy. Well, he probably a, saved the country. Yeah, yeah, probably. but but cemented his legacy in a very positive way. You know, I mean, everybody's got to say, "Hey, good going, you Joe." You know, you were selfless. I think when she wins, she, you know, he will be, he'll go down in history. I think Josh said this last week. He'll go down in history as one of our best presidents. You talk about how hard it is to get things done. He got things done in his yep. four years. In spite of the fact that he only had a slight majority the first two years and had a, he, that he lost got, the house the second he, two. He got more things done than Trump did. Trump had total control in his first uh, yeah. uh, two years and couldn't get the wall built, couldn't get Obamacare canceled. A lot of stuff that he thought he was going to just snap his fingers and it was going to go yeah. away didn't work. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. No. Uh, but, you know, he, he managed to get a lot of stuff done. Um, um, you know, I, there are things that he couldn't get done, but I mean, he wasn't, if, if she can get a Senate majority and she can get a congressional majority, she mm -hmm. can get almost anything she wants to get done, done, you know. Unless Manchin jumps into the fray, you know. Well, Manchin's not running for re-election. So oh, he won't be in there. You're right, he's not running for re-election. I, I, what's this, the, the moderate, uh, the, the guy in between, what's his name, Kennedy? I love how he goes to Trump and says, I'll stop if you give me a post in your yeah. administration. Well, well apparently, says, apparently, no way. No, last week. Apparently, Trump didn't say no way because it turns out that this Friday, RFK Jr. is know, stepping down with his r run and he is endorsing Donald Trump. Mm. Now, well, Mike. I, I think Donald Trump has second thoughts about that because. Yeah. This guy's, this guy's, a, I mean, a, even to Trump, this guy's probably a nut job. Well, my question is, what if, uh, and I'll ask Josh this, Josh, what effect do you think that's going to have? Probably not very much. I'm mm -hmm. claiming that actually the votes of those people won't go to Trump. Even mm -hmm. though he's endorsing Trump, they'll go to, they'll go to Kamala. Yeah. I, think, you're right. I think people were going with RFK Jr. because they didn't like Biden and they didn't like um, uh, they didn't like uh, uh, Kamala, yeah. and uh, they didn't like Biden and they didn't like Trump. Okay, so they went with RFK Jr. Would you agree with that, uh, Josh? A lot of it, right? Plus, there's just some people that followed him because he really believes some super crazy stuff who might still vote for neither of the two, you know, and vote yeah. for some other weird party that's on in their particular state or write somebody in or just not vote now or whatever, which is all about the same. You know, well, he had about 5% of the vote is yeah. what he had. And uh, now yeah. that he's not there any longer, it doesn't mean those people are going to go with Trump. Right. You know, this isn't the, uh, you know 
Yeah, yeah. What I wonder is if Trump promises them a, a post, is there anything that says he's got to actually do it if he becomes president? No. Doesn't have to do it. No. no. But he, no. Pr he probably did agree to give him a post to yeah. get that endorsement. I I don't know. From his last presidency, I certainly wouldn't want to be in his cabinet. Yeah, I wouldn't. wouldn't no, no. Go to prison when you're done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next step after the uh, after the cabinet is prison. You're right. Although prison, probably the psych word would probably do Kennedy good. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yeah, I talk to yeah. You. Jeff. I'm. Uh, I gotta go. Go. Uh, go to bed. Cause I got an early, early. You're good, cause doctor. we're over in about seven minutes. I know. But I'm like falling asleep anyway. Yeah, okay. Well, I thought I maybe you took one of those capsules. The uh, no, I took seven other pills. <laughs> and wait, you know, as you get older, you take more pills, I think, in life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jeff, thank you. We always thank enjoy you. having you here. Good night, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Jeff. To Jeff. Bye bye. Okay. Good night. Anyway, there he goes. Oh, he lost me. He collapsed. Did you see that? The whole thing collapsed. Uh, so, uh, where do you think it goes from here, Josh? You think uh, you think that uh, Camel is going to be able to keep this role going? I think so. Yeah. Tomorrow's the big big night for it. So, yeah. um, I mean, they seem to be on the right track to me. I think they just should keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. Trump, Trump, Trump keeps liking to point out that she won't go one on one in front of a reporter on. on why do that when all this is working? Well, no, the, I think the reason she wasn't is that because there was no convention yet. Oh. Yeah. And I think I think I think she wanted to wait for the convention to be over with and that oh. there's a you know, there's a platform and all of that. And she officially okay. has the job. Uh, and uh, I think then she wants to do it. The fact that Trump will talk to anybody anytime, anywhere, and make an ass out of himself, you know, doesn't make him some kind of brave guy. You know, and she, you know, she, uh, she stops and talks to the press when she's out yeah. coming off a plane or something, and somebody from the press asks her questions. She stops, gives them an answer, and moves on. So, I mean, what, well, how's that? Huh? I was say, Trump's holding these press conferences, but he completely ignores whatever the questions are and just that's says right. whatever he wants to say. Yeah, so but I don't that, see how that's any better. That happened in 2016 or tw election, too. Well, I they see. would ask him questions it, and he would, yeah. you know, just say what he wanted to say. Well, you saw him the other day, you know, he was selling coffee. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't, what was that about? Are you about? serious? He, no, he was out at his, uh, his, uh, Edward I Berger. think Tony probably bought it all. <laughs> I wonder if this is actually Edward Berger. Hold on a second, folks. I'm gonna. He I'm gonna... never called at night. No, let's yeah. see. Let's see who this is, okay? Because I, I'm just gonna put my my picture up now, and let's see here. Uh, Edward Berger, okay? It's not the person's not joining. Edward Berger would join yeah. faster, okay? Yeah him at night i see him on the monday show when i watch it later yeah, in the day yeah he would he would uh he would join faster this guy isn't joining faster okay so come on come on are you uh okay uh i'm well now he's frozen there what's his problem uh Okay, it says, it says, joining, joining, joining. Hmm. Well, I don't know what his problem is, but uh, I, I don't have, he, I, it's not like I don't have a thing where he can, I can stop muting. He never seems to have a problem on Mondays. No, never oh. seems to have a problem. Uh, let me see here. Let me turn that off. Let me get rid of that, and then let me bring it back in here to participants. Well, he's still there. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Let me see here. Uh, no. Uh, waiting participants, uh, waiting room participants, okay. Um, everyone in meeting, waiting room participants, uh, no. Okay, well, I, I forget it. 
He's, uh, he's just joining, 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 and nothing's doing, happening. So I'm not, I'm just going to put me, I'm going to put you guys back up, and then I will just be ready to, if that guy does to anything, you know. Anyway. So, you know, we got another, uh, we got another night of this. I'm not going to do a show tomorrow night because I figure a lot of people are going to want to watch, you know, the, uh, the big night with Kamala. And, uh, uh, oh, oh, he just hung up, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so I, I, I think it's a good move on my part not to do it. And I think you people would probably want to watch it, too, you know. Yes. Uh, and I'll be umpiring, so. Yeah, you'll be umpiring. And I'll be sitting here just, you know, talking to myself. Well, I might be talking to the cat. We got the cat here. Oh. And the cat's, right, I'm sure, right out the door now waiting for me to be finished here so she can then... <laughs> you know, rub up a lot against me. Uh, but anyway, so, um, you know, I figured that tomorrow night I just won't do a show. I told uh, uh, Amy that I'm not going to. Amy can, because probably by the time Amy goes on, if she has started giving her speech, she'll almost be through. So, you know. But, uh, you know. But I'm, I'm, uh, are, are you guys happy with what you're seeing and how this is playing itself out? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's isn't it amazing the mm. difference in the mood that we feel, even just us here. Uh, yeah. Uh, because of 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 the change that has happened. Because I didn't think Kamala would be this good. I did not think yeah. she was going to be. And from the get go, she played it just right. You know, I love, well, they were really uh, good in those Senate hearings. So no, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. But that's a Senate hearing. Yeah. I'm talking about running for president. You know, she. Well, she's had a try at it already once. No, what happened was, she was on her feet running from day one. You know, yeah. she, she learned she, from the last time. Well, she no, but she wasn't running then. Really, she was just debating. Oh. Doing stuff like that, you know, she was, okay. she, this wasn't, she wasn't in the running kind of thing, and here she's running, you know, she and she hit the ground running, and I thought, uh, you know, she amazed me. I was not a person who thought she was going to be, you know, really terrific, and what do you know? I'm, and I'm so delighted, I'm so happy, and and I'm so behind her that I can't believe it. Because I've never been yeah. this much behind a candidate. I don't. I don't even think I was this much behind Obama. I mean, I liked Obama, but I wasn't that thrilled by Obama. But mm -hmm. I'm thrilled by her. You know, and she she's hitting all the right notes, right, Josh? So far. Yeah. So are you going to be able to be here on Friday, uh, uh, Josh? Uh, yeah, I'm not working. Oh, till Saturday, so uh, I should be here. Oh, it. okay, because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, then there'll be a lot to talk about once it's all yeah. over with. We'll probably be get some numbers by then because uh, I'm sure they're out there testing the waters right now, and uh, it'll it'll just get better and better. So let's let's wait and see. But I, I think it's been terrific, I, you know. Yeah. I'm, I have no complaints except for the fact they should have gotten these people on earlier. You know, an yeah, hour, it is going a little late. I would agree with that. The, an hour would have made all the difference in the yeah, world. Yeah, I would agree. You know, uh, and and you know, don't forget us people on the East Coast. Okay, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, I uh, really appreciate you people being here. I want to thank Jeff who had to leave early because he's falling asleep, uh, and. Uh, um, you know, uh, 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 Charlie, always a pleasure having you here. Great having you here, Alan and Josh. Nice having you here. Glad to see that you're not as stoned as you were. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, every, everybody, uh, why don't you wind up giving yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you and say, there goes our citizen panel, folks, for tonight. Uh, but they'll be back here again on Friday. We're not going to do a show tomorrow night because the big Kamala Love Fest is going to be wrapping up there in Chicago. And uh, we want to see it uh, uh, play itself out. And we want you to be able to watch it and all that. And then we'll reassemble here on uh, Friday and we'll talk all about it. And 
what, what's been going on. In the meantime, we got Amy Manuel next. She's here with The Intersection, uh, and uh, she'll be taking your calls at, uh, on, on uh, Skype at GabNet Live. Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again, as I say, on Friday night this time. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.